Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show. This is our next edition of the NHL Team Previews. As you can see, we're doing the Dallas Star. I am Joe Borick, joined by the wonderful Jonathan Duncan of Off the Wall Hockey, Steel Flyers of SteelFlyers.com, and Pirlo Wisdom of Pirlo's NHL Pal and Pirlo Wisdom's YouTube channel, as well as SteelFlyers.com that all of us are from. So please check us out on there, and we'll get right into the Dallas Star. As always, I start with what are your first two impressions on the team when you think of them? And we'll start with Steele on this one. Uh, what do you first think of as your first two impressions of the Dallas story? First of all, thanks for having me on the show. Um, always a pleasure being here with uh, some of the professionals and some of the, the best in the biz. So thanks for having me on the show. Uh, as far as Dallas is concerned, the, the, the two the two names that really kind of just ring out to me have been Anton Hudobin uh, with the way he played last year, uh, especially in the playoffs. Uh, he they The team played a lot better uh, in front of him than they did in front of Ben Bishop. Uh, and he was able to um, play a lot better uh, with them in the, with him in the lineup. So I think with Hudobin being re-signed, I think that was huge for Dallas. Um, that helps to keep some of their same core group of guys uh, in as well. Uh, I'm, I'm also looking at, too, the fact that uh, we're, we're going to be missing um, Tyler Sagan for quite a bit of time here. And by missing that name and missing that production, they're going to be looking at Rupe Hints to, to step into that number one center position and be that guy who's going to have to take over at, at least until he can get back. You know what I mean? So that's my first impression uh, is keeping the goalie that played really well for them. And then is Rupe Hints going to be able to come in and take over for Sagan at least until he can come back? Yeah, that's definitely a good one to start off with to how Hudobin stepped up, got him to the cup. Uh, of course, uh, as we talked about before, the video is having a little bit of a bugaboo getting into the nation right now, but uh, hopefully he gets that sorted out. Uh, but I move to uh, John. What is your first two impressions when you think of the Dallas story? Uh, thanks for having me, Joe. Glad to be on this video. Uh, Dallas, two things that come to mind. One, team defense, and two, can they do it again? Um, they're, defensively, they were one of the best teams in the league last year, but they really struggled offensively in the regular season, and they were down near the bottom of the league as far as goals for per game goes. But then all of a sudden in the playoffs, they just completely flipped that around, and they were scoring so much more in the postseason than they did in the regular season. I think it was more than half a goal a game more in the playoffs than during the regular season. So a uh, big question with Dallas is, can they do that again? Can they get that production again? And they were a team that went a lot further than I expected them to last year. I did not have them going to the cup finals and they just, they got really hot in the playoffs. They played really well. They had a great, they got great goaltending from Anton Hudobin. And all of a sudden you, you, you ride that streak all the way to the cup finals um, I'm interested to see if Dallas can repeat that performance again or if they have a little bit of a step back this year. And I think that's going to be really interesting to watch them this year to see what happens. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think um, usually there's a great storyline of each playoff. Dallas certainly was that of last postseason. And you talked about their defense, their top prospect. If you look at a lot of things, it's either Deland <clears throat> um, Delandria or um, Harley, depending what report you look at so either way they have a defenseman in their top two prospects who's played well in the world juniors already so you're building up there you got another 19 year old and harley coming up as well so you're going to add to your defense in the next couple of years uh as well but uh steve what are your first two impressions when you think of the dallas store well for me it's really all about can rick bonus keep a role in the way i had before uh I think it comes down to, like, I hadn't heard out of Dallas for a long time that people were happy to play there. <laughs> you know, that's really what it comes down to. Rick Bonus seemed to really capture the essence of this team and do something that hasn't been done since basically the Hitchcock years. When uh, Hitchcock was is one of the greatest coaches of all time, played in an era where – Clutching and grabbing was huge, and he created a defensive system that has kind of held on for too long. <laughs> the uh, this this uh, organization had to move on from that, 
And it's taken a long time to find the right voice to get people to do that. That's what it appears like to me. Um, like jo like uh, John was saying, they they had two points, or they were they were only uh, what two goals a game? Was it two goals a game they were scoring at in the regular season? Maybe just a little bit over that. Mm -hmm. And then you know, all of a sudden they they start scoring. It, point all five, the players eight. attribute that to Rick Bonus. So I'm going to have to go with that and say. To me, what it's all about is, are they going to keep on listening to Rick Bonus? And if they are, if they do, I imagine, especially with the division they're in, they should be successful and make the playoffs this year um, and uh, do well. If they start resorting, because even in the playoffs, they would at times resort to that and I, resort to that sitting back in the defensive zone, uh, trying to block shots constantly all the time, playing on the back of their heels, even in the playoffs. If they play like that in Dallas, and I remember before the playoffs started, I said, it's a, it, Dallas is a huge waste of talent. And if they play like that, it's a huge waste of talent because they have enough talent on that team, even with Sagan being hurt, um, to be able to make the playoffs this year. Uh, Ropo Hintz was hurt during the playoffs. And he's only getting better. I, I think he'll embrace it and probably be able to do well in that role for a limited time. Yeah, I certainly agree with you on that as well. I think uh, they're a team. How Bonus does in his first full season as a head coach is going to be a big impact on how far Dallas can go. Um, a guy that I wanted to lead into, though, since we talked about Sagan's injury is their next top prospect I mentioned earlier, well mentioned Harley, is Delandria, who scored 70 points in only 42 games uh, in the OHL for Flint last year. Is there? Do you think the rush him up may be a little bit quicker, where probably he should still develop a little bit more, but he is 20, produced 70 points, they have an issue and a hole at center now. I'll start with John on this one. Do you think there's a, chan a much higher chance he cracks the roster with Dallas because of the second injury? Well, I think he's certainly going to get an opportunity. Um, you know, given knowing that Sagan's going to be out for most of this year, uh, you know, the, there's certainly an opportunity there. Now, Pavelski's a guy that can can switch to center or play wing. Um, they obviously have Radic Fox and Rupe Hintz, who are probably going to be their main cogs down the middle. Uh, with Sagan gone. Uh, and they also have uh, Jason Dickinson, who's kind of been a fourth flying guy, and Justin Dowling, who's a little bit older. And I think it's probably going to come down to Justin Dowling or um, or Delandria as to who kind of gets into that lineup. But the thing with Delandria is he's an offensive player. He's a young kid. You you don't want to throw him on a fourth line. Like that's a that's a waste of a of a talent there. To you can't just plop him on a fourth line. Um, if he's going to play, it's going to be in a top nine role. It's going to be in an offensive role. Um, and, and I certainly think he's going to be given the opportunity in camp, particularly with so much questions about the OHL and are they even going to have a season this year and what's going to happen with that. These OHL guys who are kind of on the fence, I think you might see the NHL teams just bring them in sooner rather than later because of the uncertainty surrounding that league heading into if they're even going to have a junior season this year. So yeah. um, I think Delandry is a guy that has going to be given an opportunity to crack the lineup and it's going to be up to him to take it. I agree with you on that. And I do completely agree. If you're going to call up a young developing guy that you think could be part of your next group of players you have around, you don't put him in the bottom line. Yeah, you got to put him in the top nine. Uh, that is a very good point by you there. I completely agree with that. But Steve, what is your take on Delandria? Do you think he could make the club or has a much better chance now with the unfortunate uh, injury of Sagan? Um, I think in his case, it, it, like, it depends on what's happening with the OHL and all of those sort of things like that. In a perfect world, he probably would be in the AHL this year. Um, but he's like we talked about with York, uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers. That he's really surprised me. I, I didn't think he had this much offense in him already. And it's, he's starting to really blossom as an offensive player. I, I thought he was more like going to be an energy third, fourth line guy in the NHL. And maybe he still will be. But he's showing signs to have an offense that I never really saw. So if it doesn't look like he's going to be able to play in the lower leagues... Maybe what they'll do is they keep him on and they play him on sheltered minutes 
uh, with with Pavelski playing more in the defensive zone and throw him out there in the on, in the offensive zone and give him get his feet wet uh, for that reason. Or maybe he blows my doors and is because he's progressing so well offensively, he could very well show that he's ready to play this year. It, it's going to kind of depend on training camp. He it looks like he's not he he. The weight showing on cap friendly tells me that he could use to gain a few for sure. So whatever he does, if he's gained the weight and he's starting to look like he's uh, able to to function in the NHL and not get beat up too badly, maybe maybe he makes it this year. He he seems to be going over the top everywhere he goes. Like he he seems to be. Um, getting better than most people, even the people that are picking him. He was a low first, and a lot of people said when he was picked, it was there was a lot of people that had him as a second rounder. And um, now he's showing he deserved to be picked in the first, maybe even higher. So where he could end up is, is really, uh, I don't want to put too much of a uh, gauge on it because he's overachieving. Yeah, that's a big uh, point made by you. Usually when guys overachieve and they're really playing to their – top par they tend to continue to do so because they just carry that good not just work ethic but not cockiness but confidence to their game which it seems like he has so uh, I agree with you on that I think for me the way I feel about it before I go to steel is I think since the AHL is going to start they've had teams opt in now 28 of the 31 um, pr- probably in early February you have the trial period that you can call somebody up for and send them down. I wouldn't be surprised if he does solid enough and they try that. And then if he just comes in and lights the world on fire during that trial period, they would just then let him start hitting his contract and let that progress there. If he shows some struggle and in that trial period, then when the AHL opens, uh, you can just send him down to Texas, uh, the Texas stores and, let it go from there. So I think that's more how I see them probably handling the situation. But Steele, uh, what do you think of Delandria and his chances of making the team? I think he's going to get a shot out of the gate because Pavelski is listed right now as being hurt and and not able to take pl- take part in camp right now. So uh, they they got they they got uh, Ty in there, but then they also got a couple other guys in there too, like Riley and Frederick, that are young up and coming centers that are going to be you know probably fighting for the same spots and things like that too. So. I think because of Pavelski being out at the beginning, I agree with what every everything that you guys all said. I think he's going to get a shot at the beginning, and then once the AHL starts, um, they'll probably you know keep him up for the for the for the eighth game, and then at the ninth game they'll send him down and or or they'll you know not playing for the ninth game so he doesn't stay up. Depending on you know if if what Steve said, if he lights it up. And depending on how long it's going to be for Pavelski, he might just get to stay, you know, depending on how he plays. So I think the fact that Pavelski is out at the beginning is going to give him a much more of a better look, especially in camp and maybe at the start of the season. Yeah, that's definitely a good point, too. Pavelski, if he's still banged up a little bit, that's going to give him a much higher percentage chance of getting a look there. Another guy that they called up that got a three-game cup of coffee last year, Jason Robertson, um, who's considered a natural goal scorer, probably will get the same similar type uh, look this year to see if he can be in your top nine. If not, then they might just push him back down to the AHL uh, to develop. But now we'll move on because we talked about how big of an importance um, their defense is for the Dallas Stars. When you think of their defense, uh, what do you think just is what makes it click so well there? Now we need to see more offense for them, but we've always seen just this great defensive team due to them drafting good defensemen, but also the defensemen just coming into the team and working well, like six P's in a pod since that's how many defensemen you you would have. Um, So what do you think uh, attributes to that? I'll start with Steve on this one, just their very good defensive system and being in sync with each other. Well, like I was saying before, I mean, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Hitchcock's system was amazing. He's one of the best defensive coaches ever. Um, They're 
and he and anybody who's ever had Ken Hitchcock in their organization say that his his lore goes for the ages. Like he he puts in a uh, a system and a way of being in a uh, what's the word a culture that never ends. And I you, I wouldn't want to lose that defensive culture that he's has there. Um, you know, not just philosophy, just way of thinking defensively. And I think that's just always been that way with Dallas ever since Hitch was in there. Um, and it, it'll be up to uh, um, bonus to be able to balance the offense and the defense in that way, which I don't think should be too difficult, but it's just releasing the grasp of that. Um, and the good news is while you're releasing the grasp of that a little bit, you have possibly the Vesna Trophy winner for next year. <laughs> Heiskanen could very well win the Vesna next year, or not Vesna, Norris, 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 next, Norris, Norris next year. Yeah. It, it'd be cool if he could win the Vesna, but that would be amazing. <laughs> the Norris next year, but uh, so you you have a lot of creative people back there now, is what I'm trying to say, and I think mm -hmm. that had a lot to do with drafting that way was for the purpose of finding that balance, but. The defensive aspect of what Hitchcock has put in there, you don't want to lose that either. And I really think that's really why. Just they've always had a defensive culture in Dallas. They've had a difficult time. Kind of, it seems like they've had a bit of a struggle of progressing that into today's game and finding that balance. So that's the reason why I think that they have been that. Not to mention, they just did a really good job of bringing – solid defensemen into the lineup as you said like Essa Lindell is probably one of the most underrated defensemen in the league and uh, Jamie Alexiak has grown very well for that lineup into a top four where Sakara. a lot of people yeah and Sekera they bring him from um, and then we'll be very interested to see how Mark Pishik, uh adds to that lineup as well although I, th I have a possible feeling that Joel Hanley might actually uh, take his uh, spot but we'll see what happens there. But they, they've just did well in drafting, and they've had a great philosophy ever since the Hitchcock days for their defensive system, I would say. Yeah, they definitely still have depth at that uh, position. Uh, you got Harley if you desperately need him with injuries, which the way that that kid's overly impressed me at each spot, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to nudge his way in there if need be and do something for you. Um, but... Uh, Steele, what is your thoughts of just why you think this fine-oiled machine of Dallas's uh, defense works so well? Well, I think I think that Perlow touched on it. Uh, I think a lot of it runs through the coach. And the fact that they were able to um, bring him in as instead of being the interim coach, they were able to bring him in as the full-time coach now. So now he's going to have a full camp. Well, <laughs> A de facto whatever. A, this yeah. Is. <laughs> uh, okay. He's gonna be starting camp with the team, so he'll be able to institute more of what he wants to do, things of that nature. I also like the way John Klingberg has been playing. Um, he he has really stepped up. Um, a lot of the defense runs through him. Okay, and and that's the other thing too is they've gotten a good mix of. Drafted players that they've been able to sprinkle in, you know, with Heisken in as somebody that they've been able to bring up through their system. And and man, Lindell, I, I you you can't can't go wrong with that guy. But the the fact that they've been able to put this team together and get them all on the same page, and what you could really tell was when they were playing when um, Bishop was the goalie, compared to when Hudobin was the goalie. It was it was almost like a night and day different type of defensive system that they played with Bishop than they did with Hudobin. And I think that once they realized that Hudobin was more of in my opinion, that Hudobin played better with the defense, then I think the defense got better. Yeah, they got more comfortable over time too, because you gotta adjust to your uh new goalie. But I do agree with the things that each of you brought up. Iso Lindell is quickly making himself one of the more underrated defensemen uh, in the league down there. And it's easy to do when you got Miro Heiskanen and John Klingberg on your team above you uh, to become a little <laughs> underrated in people's eyes uh, as well. 
But, uh, John, uh, before we hit on their goaltending, uh, what is your big keys? Uh, do you just agree with the other two, or do you have anything else to add uh, input on their defense? Well, I think the biggest thing with Dallas's defense is that everyone knows their roles. Everyone slots into their roles oh, very yeah, well, and they all buy in to that that's your role on this team. And Miro Haskinen has taken so much pressure off of John Klingberg where for years Klingberg was supposed to be the guy. He had all the weight on his shoulders. He was the number one. He was the guy that Dallas leaned to, and they didn't really have a good defense core around him. And now Haskinen comes in now and is clearly the number one. Haskinen is going to be a Norris Trophy winner. And the way that he played in the playoffs last year, you could just see it at just 21 years old, how good he is going to be. And that has taken so much pressure off of Klingberg. It's allowed Klingberg to drop down to the second pair and just let him play his game. And Klingberg had a really good playoffs as well last year. Then you've got Lindell, who's got a great two-way game and is is really slotted in nicely next to Haskinen. Oleksiak has been a totally different player since coming back to Dallas. They traded him to Pittsburgh and then traded right back for him. And <laughs> since he's come back to Dallas, he's his game has grown so much into just being an everyday NHL player. Um, Andre Sakara, really good veteran guy to have a, as a depth guy there. And they've got great depth as well. So I think the biggest thing with Dallas's defense is that everyone slots into their particular roles very nicely. And they all buy in to that being their role and just doing their job and what it takes to win. Yeah, I fully agree with that. I think um, a big thing we have to mention when we brought up Pizik, who I believe Pirlo brought up as an addition, he can also play. He's got some wing time down in Florida, so he offers you flexibility now as well if you want to throw him on your fourth line to kind of pound some people up and play the wing for you as well. You definitely have that flexibility with him as well. But Pirlo, were you going to say something? It's, I saw you uh, having facial reactions as john was talking did you want to have an input or something or oh well, i was just saying that he mentioned something he leaned on something where it's not just the defenseman it's the forwards philosophy they have a very for a forward philosophy of strong defense everybody on their forward team forward group plays defense well it's ingrained in them there and they just have people that are very good at it ropo hints but for, for instance will it will probably be one of the better two-way forwards in the league soon if not now but uh yeah no actually i wasn't going to say anything i just he's the goat you just follow on every <laughs> word right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think, I think the big thing with Dow is you just hit on the head too is they develop throughout their defense well where I think Delandria going to a team like that might behoove his career the best because if you go to a more offensive team he might become very offensively focused and then never really become good at defense where he has the body he's growing into to be physical be good on both ends where his best chance to do that is probably with a team that very much values making everyone when they first come into the league good on both ends which is sometimes why they don't firecracker on offense guys that come up for uh dallas we also didn't mention one undrafted guy that came up for them last year in kivaranta and really showed up in the uh playoffs so if someone like him can continue to do well on the wing as an undrafted guy with the Landria coming in, potentially that could add to your uh, offense as well. But before we go into where we think Dallas will finish, we of course have to talk about their goaltending situation with Ben Bishop being sidelined through pretty much right around the playoff to going into the stretch run time. If he's able to come back, so you're going to be going in with Hudobin and Ottinger, or you might be going in with Ottinger and whoever the heck their other goaltender um, is if Hudobin can't get into the nation and get all that sorted out, um, since we are only about 10 days away from the start, less than 10 days from the start of the season now. So what is your thoughts? I'll start with Steele on this, on their goaltending uh, to start the season, especially if Jake Ottinger, who I think is a very good young goalie, is thrusted into the starting role waiting for Hudobin to be ready. Yeah, he, he very well might be, you know what I mean, depending on how things go with with how Hudobin is able to get back in. And, and you know what? He's going to get a shot. <laughs> 
Okay, because he's the he's the main man right now in in practice because Bishop's not there and Hudobin's not there. So every everybody they got there is all is all of their minor league guys and and sure. all of their 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 lower guys. So I mean everybody's going to get a look. So it, I, depending on what happens with Hudobin and if he has to uh, stay at at a quarantine for for 14 days, whatever the case is, and until he's able to play, then yeah, you're definitely going to see Ottinger start the season, you know. And and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Okay, he he hasn't played that terribly bad, and he's he okay. He's he's young, but he, look, you gotta at some point you just gotta say okay, you gotta put him in. You got to give them the opportunity. You got to give them the chance and just see how they do. You know what I mean? And and quite frankly, this all of this all boils into one little major point. They need to win now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they need. Yeah. They either need to hope that their goalies hold, and Hudobin can get in soon, or they're going to be looking. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, looking at their goaltending, scrolling through, undrafted being he's 25, Landon Bow would probably be their backup if they have to start with Ottinger as a goaltender because their other guy is just an inexperienced 22-year-old. Right. That is, so I would think he would be their backup if Hudobin could not get into the country. Ottinger, though, did have a very good last year at Boston, a 2 4 5 9 26. Then he had a two five seven nine seventeen in his first year in the AHL, so that's a pretty solid um, start to build on there. And then the one period that he got put into in the playoffs, he didn't play bad either. Um, so, yeah, I think they're fine if he has to play. And I think the big key to also why he's going to be fine is we talked about it, their defensive system. Their defensive system is going to protect their goalie. And if they got their young stud that they think could be their future starter in there, they're going to protect him with even more cost, probably. So, yeah, I think if they have to if you go with Ottinger, they'll be fine. But, um, John, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm not really worried about them in goal, um, particularly with the Ben Bishop situation. I think they proved in the playoffs last year that they don't need Ben Bishop. Honest, honestly, if I'm Dallas, I'm looking to move him. And Car- <laughs> Carolina, I'm talking to you. Um I, I think, you know, B- Bishop is a guy that they just... The, if Hudobin's your starter, Ar- Ottinger is a more than capable backup at this point. He played at Boston University. I saw him there. He was very, very good. He had a very solid first AHL season last year. I think o- Ottinger's ready to be a backup in the NHL. Hudobin's your starter. I'm much more concerned about Hudobin not being in camp. Like I, he, He's the guy you need. Bishop is, I think he's on his way out in Dallas. Hudobin's the guy that you need. And, um, yeah, they need him to get into camp as quickly as possible and, and get ready to play as quickly as possible. And hopefully those immigration issues don't linger too long. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Hudobin is definitely the man uh, down there now. Colden Point is their other goalie that I don't think would be the backup since he's inexperienced, where Landon Bow has at least been around uh, in the minors for a few years now. So uh, I agree with you on all those points. I just think Ottinger, if you have to go, say, maybe a week um, until everything gets sorted out, I think they'll be fine for that yeah, time period. They'll be fine. It's once, yeah, that's... yeah, it's once you start going Four past games. that. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, it's once you start going past and have the back to backs and have to get Landon Bow in more, that's when you might get a little fuzzy if it goes a little bit longer there. But uh Steve, what are your thoughts before we go into predictions on uh, the goaltending situation there in Dallas? Oh, it's one of the reasons why they also have been so great defensively or had that is because they've always had good goaltending. I mean, if uh if Bishop is, if you're scratching your head thinking maybe we can lose Bishop, it kind of tells you how great a goaltender you have because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bishop is a great goaltender. So um, I'm. this is going to be the year for Ottinger right now. This is where he really has an opportunity to show what he can do. He was a, he was a first round pick. Um, a lot of very high hopes for him. He looked good in his time when he played in the playoffs right now. And if he looks like he's rocking it, yeah, I mean, you got Bishop as an asset there that maybe it's time to move on if he can get healthy. Mm-hmm. That's the thing with Bishop is just he's been 
injury after injury after injury problem the last couple of years. My, I do kind of have a bit of a concern with Hudobin through his career. He's never played first number one minutes before. And the reason why that has been his size and the question of his stamina and stuff like that. So just as much maybe it is for Ottinger, this is a great challenging year for him if Bishop doesn't come back. Can he be that number one? He certainly can put the numbers up when given the opportunity in the limited time that he has, pretty much as a 1B, as a backup. But he's never had the opportunity to be the true number one. And a lot of that is to do with the size. He's a battler. And I have a feeling, at least for one year, if you make him play, if you allow him to play number one minutes, he'll get her done. You know, I don't know over the long term. He's getting older now, too. He mm -hmm. hasn't had... So can that body hold up is my only issue with that, not whether he can stop the puck. And Ottinger there, um, uh, Steele brought up a great point about how Dallas plays with Bishop now. See, uh, to, before Bishop was great because they weren't a great transition team anyways. It was a stop the puck, play defense, put it up the boards, very basic defensive hockey. Now you have bonus in there, and it's like, we want to play transition. We want to pass the puck to our defenseman. We want a goaltender that's able to move the, move the puck. And, uh, and uh, that changes things a lot for, for them. So um, it's, it'll, I, think they'll be, I think they'll be good. And I, I'm rooting for Hudobin. Hudobin has always beat every odd up until now. So can will do, am I going to bet on him beating this odd? Probably, probably. Hudobin shouldn't even be in the league at his size, according to what people have told him, and he never listened to a word of that. Have you ever heard him do an interview? He doesn't really listen to anything. He just, <laughs> he's off in his own little world. Yep. You ask him a question, yeah. he answers something completely different than you asked him. So <laughs> he's great that way. So he, he doesn't listen to the noise. He just goes out there and does what he does, and he'll probably end up being great. Yeah, and we also got to remember in this season, it's 56 games, so Hudobin playing a number one role will not be to the extent of the amount of games that it would be in an 82-game season and then if Ottinger comes in early and shows up and shows out maybe they would have a 1a 1b type thing going rather than a true number one and then that preserve everybody for the postseason at that point and makes it a lot easier going into the postseason with whoever you not at that point probably Hudobin as the veteran to having rest and not being as tired legged at that point but with this central division our last question to wrap up for this video will be I'll start with Steve on this one uh, where do you think they are going to finish the Dallas Stars? I think their top competitors in the division off the top of my head would probably be the Blue Jackets and the Carolina Hurricanes and Tampa Bay. Uh, but where do you think Dallas finishes in this whole central division this year? I'm, I'm kind of all over the board with this one because, I mean, if they're able to put their offense that they did out there in the playoffs, I mean, they could beat out – any team, really, honestly. Uh, I'm going to tentatively say fourth for now, but um, they are, to me, the uh, the wild card. of. They could be very high. If things don't work out with Hudobin or any of their goaltenders get injured and odd injured, can't toe the line, then they could miss the playoffs completely. Uh, how are they going to respond to Sagan's injury? Uh, if Ropo Hints isn't uh, up for the task, that could be in trouble. Pavelski is now 36 years old. There is question marks in this lineup. But in the playoffs, there was question marks too. I was one to question them. I was the one that said that they weren't going to be a factor, and uh, I was wrong. So uh, that's uh, I wouldn't count them out. But I'm going to attentively say fourth for now. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good um, assessment there. Steele, where do you think they are going to finish now with their injuries and the way things are going coming into this season? Well, they were my sleeper team last year, and I actually had them picked between them and Colorado, and they actually made it to the um, conf or they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. So I, I picked Dallas to win the West last year, and I. 
with the central and the way things have been realigned, it's going to be a very different um, uh, different situation for them because they're not playing. I think their their biggest rival last year was Colorado. Okay, and I also think that one of their other biggest rival too was St. Louis. Okay, and they're not really going to be playing those. They're not going to be playing those teams. Okay, so I think that that's going to allow them to be a, a little bit higher in this division. Okay, I think when when you look at the Tampa Bay's, and then the very next one you look down in is Dallas, and then the very next team that jumps off to me would be Carolina. Okay, so I'm putting Dallas. Even with their issues, I think they'll be able to right the ship. I think they'll be able uh, – I think Rupe Hintz is going to take over and be what he's going to be. I think that they're going to be able to get Hudobin back and play well and, and have more offense and, and, and continue on with their defense, especially with the coach uh, being there now full-time. Look, they got to win now. Because almost their entire team is up for UFAs or whatever the case is for next year. So they got to win this year because they're going to be rebuilding next year. Yeah, they got some good young players uh, if they do decide to sign some people and kind of retool. I think they'll probably be more retool mode than rebuild. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm picking them second behind Tampa Bay. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a, that's a bunch of good reasoning there as well. So we got a fourth and a second. John, where are you putting them uh, this year coming into the start of the season? Uh, I'm I'm agreeing a lot with Perlo on this one. I think this team's a complete wild card. They could go. They could finish as high as second this year. They could finish as low as six, and it's going to depend on a lot of different factors. Um, obviously, the goaltending and what happens there with Bishop out, replacing Sagan offensively is going to be, I think, their biggest problem. And I just think offense in general would be the one thing that could probably hold them back and really hurt them this season. But if they get good offense I and, you know, Kivi Ranta steps into a full-time role and Hint steps up, Foxa steps up. All of a sudden, you're looking at a team that I think could finish easily as high as second. I don't think they're going to finish ahead of Tampa Bay, but um, there's just there's so they're a complete they're a complete wild card. They could go up, they could go down, they could be anywhere. I'll say probably third. I think I'll go third for Dallas. I think. Tampa is going to win the division. I think Carolina is going to finish right behind Tampa, and I think Dallas will come in third and make the playoffs this year. They should be a playoff team. Unless things go really bad, they should be a playoff team. Yeah. Well, I feel like you might have looked at the notes that I had on my phone somehow because that's exactly how I had the (laughs) division. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, uh, that's – Pretty much what John said. Um, is but uh, yeah, all right. I, I had a Tampa one, Carolina two. I think there'd be three because I just um have big faith in Ottinger and think he is going to be one of the better young goalies when he gets that uh, chance. I think they might end up doing a Thatcher Demko type thing to him where it's like, we got these veterans. Let's keep playing these veterans a lot. And then eventually you're just going to see him explode in a situation like Demko did. And you'll be like, wow, yeah. And you knew it was there all along. It's just they hit him behind people for the whole time. Uh, They could end up doing that, but I still think he'll get his eventually. And I think this year he'll definitely be a good enough B, if not even potentially splitting time so like i said they go into the playoffs well rested so i would put them at three for the reason of goaltending the fact that their defense is just going to keep getting better with guys coming into their next season especially heisken and now coming into his next season so i'm going to put them at three coming in this year but this has been a great video guys thanks for joining please check out everybody's work at steelflyers.com and check out john at off the wall hockey steel at steel flyers on youtube pirlo at pirlo wisdom and mine at sports fanatic news please have a great safe and pleasant day everyone peace out